historically one of the best protections of the value of money against the inroads of political spending was the gold standard, the redemption of money in gold on demand. This put a check rein on the politician, Warren Randolph Burgess. Hello again, welcome back. Let's continue analyzing Cervantes' masterpiece. Altisidora pretends to faint, and Don Quixote confronts her. I know what these happenings are all about. Don Quixote then tells Altisidora's friend to place a lute in his room with which he will respond to this damsel the best way that I can, for at the beginnings of love, quick disillusionments are usually a proven remedy. Two aspects of this situation. First, Don Quixote cites Ovid's Remedia Amoris in his plan to disillusion Altisidora and follows correctly the medical treatises of the Renaissance that prescribed music for lovesick patients. Second, Don Quixote has now reached a tragic low point according to his own value system. He has become one of those frivolous, arrogant, intriguing, and highly sexualized courtly knights whom he despises. On the other hand, note Don Quixote's depth and versatility. This episode seriously challenges our stereotype of Don Quixote as a crazy militant knight. I bet you did not know that Don Quixote could play the guitar and sing. Rambo has now become Elvis. Of course, the Duke and Duchess have planned another comical trick for their guest. Don Quixote's preparation for his song is awkward. Instead of a lute, Don Quixote finds a viruela in his room, more akin to the modern Spanish guitar, but he takes this in stride. He tunes the guitar and actually spits and clears his throat. Don Quixote's song is another ridiculous ballad with important information. First, he diagnoses the cause of Altisidora's sickness. Ironically enough, just like Don Quixote at the beginning of part one, and like the Hidalgos of Baroque literature generally, she suffers from too much free time, from what the ancients called otium. Commonly, the forces of love can unhinge souls, using as their instrument unregulated indolence. Second, Don Quixote recommends work and chastity as solutions. This includes a recognition that men like him, both types of knights, are fickle. Knights errant and those that inhabit courts take their pleasure with free maidens, but they marry the chaste. Did you know Remedia Amoris is a Latin poem, stoical in nature, written by the Roman poet Ovid, and which consists of a series of recommendations regarding how to avoid the dangers and pains of love. The song's conclusion, although prosaic at times, is an excellent summary of the Neoplatonic vision of the mechanics of love in combination with Don Quixote's assertion of his loyalty to Dulcinea, True love marks the soul with an original image, and subsequent lovers cannot wipe this impression away. Love that is recently arrived, which calls today and departs tomorrow, leaves no images truly marked upon the soul. Paint over a painting neither discloses nor displays, and where there is an original beauty, a second cannot take the trick. Dulcinea of Toboso, there on my soul's tabula rasa, is so painted that she can never be removed. The locus classicus of this vision of love is Plato's Symposium, also known in Spanish as El Banquete, or the Banquet. Quixotic Mission. According to Don Quixote, what is the cause of Altisidora's sickness? A. Price inflation. B. A wandering womb. C. Excessive idleness. Correct answer. C. Excessive idleness. Now come the cats. From above Don Quixote's window, the Duke and Duchess's minions unfurl a rope covered with bells, and down this rope, they unleash an enormous sack of cats, each with bells tied to their tails. Two or three cats enter Don Quixote's room through the bars, and darting from one place to another, it seemed as though a legion of devils had been loosed in there. As usual, Don Quixote fights back against what he perceives as evil enchanters, stabbing at the cats with his sword. One cat latches onto Don Quixote's face, and when the Duke tries to help him, Don Quixote is adamant. No one touch him. Leave me one-on-one -on -one with this demon, with this sorcerer, with this enchanter, and I will teach him man-to-man -man exactly who Don Quixote of La Mancha is. 
The Duke and Duchess are ashamed of their prank. They left feeling regretful about the harsh outcome of the prank. And Don Quixote needs five days in bed to fully recover. Cervantes then deftly cuts back to Sancho's governorship. That's all for now. Find out what happens with our characters in our next discussion of this fascinating novel. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.